We're always looking at the different yeah. options you can have to build that, yeah. that perfect, the elusive, perfect cruising boat. So yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear yeah. about that boat when you find it. Yeah, yeah. we're still working on it. So yeah. check that space again. Yes. We're still, yeah. yeah. Paul's always playing. I'm with always designs looking at drawings and, and designs and, <laughs> and drawing and sketching and thinking of ways to improve things. And, yes. Yeah. And now that we're in lockdown for a while, the, the, the wheels are turning. He's got all kinds of things. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I'm starting to dream of an aluminum boat. <laughs> oh, we did a we did a, ter a tour of a maracuja, a maracuja. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Garcia, doesn't it? Garcia? Yes, Garcia, Garcia yeah, yeah. yes, beautiful. Well, they do beautiful. Put the link up here, but we did a we did a uh, an interview. We did a little series called "Cool Boats We Like," hmm. and we were hunting for another boat. That's why we did it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we were visiting people in the Anchorages, you know, while we were travel around. And we met this guy in Spanish Wells. Spanish Wells, yeah. And with the Maracuja, beautiful boat. Yeah, they're nice. They're beautiful. The welding those guys do, and that's a French company, but this Dutch as well, Dutch and French do these incredible welding. Yeah. Where you can't believe it isn't a single piece of aluminum. Yeah. yeah. It was lovely. Well, it into this fantastic shape. It also had it had a twin drop keel, but it also had yours has the fins at the back, right? The dual rudders. The yeah. dual yeah. is that rudders? Yeah. We have two rudders. The Maracujas have done. I'm not sure if they've even done different kinds in the Garcia because some the before and aft board, and some have a the main board and a and a rudder that a small yeah. rudder that has a sink a fin on the back of the rudder. Yeah, it's the one thing that needs addressing on a, on a, a shallow boat. If you're going to mm -hmm. lift the keel, you can't have this rudder sticking down. So that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to do something about the rudder, and they're thinking about it. So. I mean, ours has got the two rudders, and that has a lot of advantages. It sails really well upwind, sails well in the ocean. Mm -hmm. But then there's two exposed rudders picking up weeds at sea, so a plus and minus. Yeah, yeah so. it's always a trade-off, eh? Does that help with a bit of the side slip? Because I find that going to wind, we slip side, right? We crab a bit, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. crab a lot, actually, I think. Yeah. I think it does, because... When we're heeled over, we always have one rudder firmly in the water. Yeah, and the rudders have a bit of an angle to them. Yeah, the stern, so ninety all the time. This one is, is is pretty much straight, straight down. And it's a fairly good sized rudder. Yeah. It's just yeah. only about a meter deep, so uh -huh. it, it becomes even slightly deeper than a meter when you're going upwind. I think yeah. it does help, but yeah, also our keel is pretty pretty big. Yeah, because like, the centerboard, your centerboard is is. Um, fairly thin is it it is yeah it's only i want to say like two feet wide yeah yeah okay i guess and ours is bigger deep. smaller than that at the bottom but bigger than that at the top and it's yeah. nearly eight feet long yeah. so. and i find if the seas are confused i f i feel like those two rudders do help us not move around sideways yeah as sailors, we are all so lucky to be able to explore these special places on our amazing planet. I'd like to know kind of how you guys have organized your lives somewhat. Um, did you always keep a place, uh, a home somewhere that you could go back to? Did you do like seasonal sailing or did you? We've done a three, our first, when we first headed off cruising 30 years ago, we went off for three whole years. I didn't come back to Canada at all Yeah, and lived on the boat. But then after that, we've always kept a home base in Canada. So sure. now for the last 22 yeah. years, we've had a base up here. We have our studio for production in the basement and live upstairs and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and keep that. And we like the sort of mix of time. So we spend anywhere from two to five months here in Canada and the re all the rest of the time, more than half the year mm -hmm. sailing on the boat. Yeah, and it really so. started as a result of our television work 
um, Discovery Channel was the first uh, broadcaster to pick up our show. And at that time, you know, editing was pretty clunky <laughs> and yeah. you couldn't do it on the boat. Yeah. So we needed to come home to edit the shows for television. And we discovered after that first three year trip that we were quite travel weary. We, we were taking things for granted and getting frustrated with language differences. And we just thought, okay, it's time to get home. And then our TV work took off and they wanted more shows. So we went back and did six months and then came home to do the editing. And we found that for us, that was a perfect balance because when we were home, we were happy to be home and plugged in and with our families and in tune. And then we couldn't wait to get back to the boat and we'd get back to the boat and we were all recharged and having fun learning new languages and dealing with all the crazy things that happen to you when you're cruising and just appreciating things more. Yeah. So even though now we can do most of the editing on the boat, we still like that rhythm of coming home and being ashore for a few months each year. We, we sail about eight months of the year. Wow. Yeah, I remember also our first boat was very basic. Like we built the boat <laughs> ourselves. The idea was to have a two-year sabbatical. It didn't have pressurized or hot water. Yeah, you know, it, it was very basic. It didn't have a shower. So it was a very basic boat. And we lived on it for three years straight. And then we lived, we had it for 18 yeah. years. Yeah. So now the boat is so much more complicated. It's got us, we have separate showers. <laughs> You know, <laughs> more we, comfortable in my terms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> complicated yeah. and technical. Complicated terms. for the person who is in charge of fixing it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had you planned on doing the filming and the show when you left on your first boat? Yes, that was very much part of our dream. Uh, Paul and I went to school together, and in high school, we were involved in filmmaking and drama and yeah. everything, and and outdoor education. And we just had this dream that, oh, it would be so fun to build a boat and do a trip and document it and see if we could do anything with our film work. Mm -hmm. And and it was all film and tape at that time. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was very much a part of the dream. So we documented our first trip um, and produced a documentary called yeah. Call of the Ocean and Discovery Channel picked that up as part of their Search for Adventure series, and that's how all our TV work got started. Marine life here is excellent, despite receiving so many regular visitors. In fact, the reef right out in front of the cave shows just how lovely the marine life can be in the Exumas, large schools of fish and lots of healthy coral. So uh, after that, other channels in Canada picked it up. We've been on Travel and Escape, Cottage Life, uh, the new VR network at uh, the time. And um, we have an agent that represents the show now. It's on in 47 million households in 24 languages around the world. So oh my wow. goodness. Wow. It's, uh, it's really, yeah. really grown. And well, you've worked really hard for that. Do you have... Do you have sailing background? Is that how you became on a, like you got on a boat? I used to dinghy sail in the day mm -hmm. and my grandfather was out sailing in his day in the long yeah. time ago. And my family always had boats. We had a cottage up on Lake Simcoe, but um, it, it, for me, sailing was a new thing. And so Paul got me into sailing and um, you know, we just loved it. And actually, when we were in university, we used to do houseboating on the Trent Severn Canal with friends. Yeah. And you know, they had fun partying, and Paul and I just enjoyed planning the navigation and where we <laughs> would be. And we kept thinking, oh, if we were doing this on a sailboat, we could go farther, cheaper. We've got to, yeah. you know, do more with sailing. I think having people on the boat. It's one of the biggest things we've enjoyed in the last few years is having mm. more people come and sail with us on the boat. Yeah. And that way we can share uh, the lifestyle that we've got to mm. enjoy. And I love being able to show people how to yeah. do how to do cruising and, and just okay. what kind of world is out there. Not yeah. just through the shows, but by having people on yeah. the boat. Yeah, it That's changes it up. It yeah. does. And especially because we've been cruising so long, you know, it's just our life. And to have guests on board that are new to it and excited about it, you know, it, we look at our lives with fresh eyes and see, yeah. you know, it helps us to appreciate what we, what, what we, we think of as normal, like, yeah. you know, the dolphins have yeah. come around the boat again and 
-hmm. and the stars shooting stars and phosphorescence and yeah and amazing diving and friendly locals and we, we get almost used to that and mm -hmm. i think both the filming and having guests have both helped us to see it's different because yeah. some of the things we put in the films we think well it is kind of normal it's sort of our our mm -hmm. normal but not for other people so right we get a real response when we put it up in uh, movies. Yeah, when we were doing television, it was all very one way. You know, we'd come up with ideas we mm. thought people would be interested in. And doing presentations at boat shows was really the only one-to-one -one conversation we had get with our some viewers. some feedback a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And we'd get ideas, you know, of things they were interested in, and then we'd incorporate those into the shows. Um, but now, you know, it's really fun to take it a step further. And, and actually, that's how it started was when we did seminars at boat shows, people would say, oh, I've learned so much, but it would be great to, you know, sail with you on the boat and really get hands on. And we thought, well, you know, why not do that? That would be fun. Sure. And so we started it with uh, in 2007 with our 42. Mm -hmm. And um, and we just enjoy it so much. And sometimes it's the simple things, you know people have a boat, but maybe they've never anchored and they're nervous of that. So they go out and sail and go in and out of the marina. And, you know, we as cruisers love to anchor. So to show them the process and how to be confident and comfortable with that. And then later hear that, oh, now they're out anchoring with their own boat and seeing so much more of their own cruising area sure. is very sure. satisfying to us. And of course, since we've been doing this a long time, we often meet people that came out with us or have watched our DVDs uh, and they're now out cruising and having a good time. And nice. that's yeah. immensely satisfying. I'll and bet. you have a boat now too that, how many um, cabins in your boat? We there have are... three double cabins. So, so we can yeah. have, and two, two heads, both with showers. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. very, very comfortable, very luxurious. Yeah. Really. yeah. One of the cabins has bunk beds. So if we have single sailors that want to come and join on a passage, there's single berths, and then we have a very nice aft cabin and four cabin. So she was purpose built for this, uh, for entertaining oh. charters then, is that? Yeah, that was the idea that, that we'd be able to have people come along and have a comfortable place for them to stay. Yeah. And yeah. The, boat would, the boat might be a little bigger than we would have probably chosen just if it was just yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. wanted wanted to be able to share the life with people, not just through the films. So. Yeah. And yeah. Nice to have too the extra help because when you were making the crossing that I saw, your ninth crossing, you had you have the extra eyes and the extra um, watch, which is oh. really nice. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. done many Atlantic crossings with just the two of us, mm -hmm. but it's always an endurance test. And I mean, it's very freeing to know that we can do it. But when we have others on board, it's just more fun and everybody gets more rest and you feel safe if, you know, if somebody got hurt, there's lots of others yeah. to, to look after them and look after the boat. Yeah. So yeah, we've always had a great time having crew on board and, uh, yeah, and I think I've lost track of how many crossings we've done on our own. Is it four or five? I think well, nine, said, like, Debbie said you're ninth, but I think. We've done nine. Well, I've read, oh. You did eight on your own. You did one on the cat, right? Oh, that's true. We've yeah. done them on different boats, yeah. but in terms of like the three we did on two step, we did just you and me. Right. And then we did one, uh, on, one on the 42, 42 only, but with two friends. Four is a really nice number to do a crossing with, mm -hmm. on a, especially on a smaller boat. Sure. And then, uh, and then on the 49, we did one on our own didn't we? Yeah. Just the one. Yeah. So I guess we, we've done four single yeah. solo ones. It's a yeah. lot more work, you know, two people on a boat, you know, you're switching off all the time. You don't get to see each yeah. other that much. And yeah. So it's we're, tiring. We're, yeah. We're, we're right at the point now where we're about to start attempting things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we've always had a, like a little 32 footer is what we started with. Right. The Aloha. And, yeah. and it's, yeah. And the Aloha, it's just basically an alleyway with uh, settees, I mean, that's that's it, right? So yeah. this new boat now, we've got some pretty serious room on board and it's more capable. So mm -hmm. we've been talking about doing Atlantic crossings, but uh, Deb's a little concerned about. Yeah, a little concerned. We just had a couple that we sailed with a little bit in the Bahamas. They just got rescued in the Atlantic off their boat. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, dear. Oh, that's... Just, I think on Friday. 
Oh, 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 oh my goodness, so soon. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's yeah. Five, I think 590 nautical miles off of... They were east of uh, Bermuda, five, 500 miles. Yeah. Oh, dear. And they got 50 knot winds and huge seas and their steering failed. Oh, oh wow. Catastrophically. No. And uh, then they, for some reason, they're taking on water. We don't know all the details. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that they're the safe. Series. But oh, yeah, man. that does, you know, affect your feelings, especially when you know them. It wow. makes it more personal. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys are very DIY. I mean, you you know how to handle your boat and you know it well and you can fix things. And um, I think that helps a lot. And, you know, you do a few offshore things before you make the big jump too. And that that helps you mentally to get into the rhythm. Sure. You know, yeah. We found that. I mean, you can do lots of training, but you really only learn by doing. Well, so. that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Your first jump across was uh, from where? Our first crossing, we left from Florida and to Bermuda and Bermuda to the Azores. And uh, that's still the worst, roughest crossing we've ever, or the roughest yeah. passage we've ever had, mm -hmm. the biggest waves. So. Yeah. yeah. So that was 18 days going to the Azores and a big storm at the beginning because we weren't good at weather forecasting then. So we definitely have yeah. made big strides Learned to improve our weather forecasting. By experience. <laughs> now we know if we have to wait another week or two in Bermuda, how bad can that be? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We well, were newbies and impatient yeah. and it looked like there was a window and we got caught out. But, you know, we got through the nightmare and looked after each other and the boat looked after us. And after that, you know, I didn't worry as much because I knew that we could all deal with it. And, uh, sure. and, yeah, and we just learn to be more patient and of course now weather forecasting information and technology yeah, weather um, routing, makes so it all so much decisions. easier yeah. than it did in 1990. Yeah, so. yeah that, that's been I think the biggest change as we were going to uh, the Bahamas this past year we, we did just about everything or we could have done just about everything with a cell phone and, and an iPad you know it's crazy now Oh, yeah. How simple it is. Really, anyone can do it. 